So here we will set ruling for the next session. Many performing arts are under threat today as cultural practices become standardized, tradition practices are being abandoned. Even in cases where they become popular, only some expressions may benefit while the others crucially suffer. And this narrative becomes important when we talk about my country, my kahani. To have, to have, a, dynamic, to have a dynamic discourse on the same titled Show and Tell Shaving Cultural Practices, we have with us Mr. Pratik Patnaik, researcher, archivist, and musician, Ms. Arushi Mudgal, Odissi dance exponent, and Ms. Sniti Mishra, classical vocalist. I request all of them to please join the stage for the session. Ms. Arushi Mudgal is one of the finest Odissi artists who had been selected as one of the top 10 dancers in 2018 by the New York Times. Ms. Sniti Mishra of Visharad in classical music has been the youngest flag bearers of classical vocal music. She won the most remarkable voice title at the Z Saregama Pass Singing Superstar in 2010. Her performances are inclined towards the Indian youth getting closure to classical music. Apart from being in association with Grammy nominee Louis Banks, her famous Kashmiri Sufi piece has featured in the Manoj Bajpai starer web series, The Family Man. And Mr. Pratik Patnaik is a devoted scholar of the Odyssey classical music and a proponent of the Jagannath temple tradition. He has made efforts to document rare art forms of Odisha, which has showered upon him blessings from distinguished peers. I'd also request Ms. Kaveri Bamzai, the festival coordinator, to join the panelists and moderate the session. The session has been dedicated 30 minutes, inclusive of the last five minutes for questions from the audience. Thank you. Since we're already running over time, uh, quite remarkable that we're already doing that. I'd like to request uh, all of you to uh, briefly talk about your art, and then we'll uh, expect a little performance, a little demonstration of it. We're, I know we're asking a lot, but it's so rare to have uh, such talented people here. So I'd like to start with uh, Pratik right away, because I think he's the youngest uh, in the entire audience, if not on stage. Pratik, talk a little about what drew you to actually documenting uh, uh, you know, the arts and uh, the performing arts uh, of uh, the state? Hello. And how old are you exactly? I'm 22. 22, oh, my. <laughs> Tell me. OK, so uh, there's music in our family. My grandmother used to sing. She used to sing ODC classical. Right. And uh, very much into music from the beginning. and. Uh, over time, I began to listen to old gramophone recordings that I'd listened to from my grandmother. The songs of the 1930s and 1920s, people who were aged 70, 80, used, uh, have recorded them in 1934. So that's a very less researched field in our state especially. There's a lot of work going on in that regard across the country, but very little in Odisha. Uh, Gradually, I began uh, watching all the performing art forms of the state, and uh, gosh, there are a lot. In, uh, if you go about Ramalila, there are singularly almost 30 Ramalilas in, only in Odisha. 30, 30? 30 versions, over that, most right. likely. So then I was like, what are the songs, and I have to know, and I went to the villages and all. For example, uh, there are, there's a 105-year-old guru hmm. right now in the villages as we speak. And he sings a Krishna Leela. He's uh, one of the last uh, scions of the great uh, veterans of that form. And you don't get to listen to these songs. And uh, if I tell there are the 30 Rama Leelas, then count in all the Krishna Leelas and uh, Radha Prema Leela, Bharata Leela, Prahalada Nataka, Rama Nataka. I can go on. The list is, uh, it'll be some, at least some uh, 200 or so forms, each having uh, 400 songs, 500 songs. There are ragas that are dying. Because as a musician, this interests me very much. Because uh, just like uh, if you find a piece of a temple that has remained buried underground and it's being mm. excavated, yeah. that's the feeling I get when I listen to a raga that has been composed by Kavi Surja Baladev Ratha some 300, uh, 200 years ago. It's the first time I'm realizing this stuff is there and nobody has cared to collect it. 
and uh, that is the kind, that's a kind of thrill that it gives me and uh, i decided to shoot it because uh, unless i recorded this is literally i have met single people i have met people there was a ramalila in chikiti of ganjam it was known as chikiti ramalila uh, it is a very very highly classical and elongated kind of singing it is very prevalent in that region some 3 400 years ago it is like and there's just one performer of it now there's a single man for whom i had to go to 15 villages single just one i went person. to one village uh, that form has become extinct from 1950 oh and it has some uh, 630 songs right and so i was just uh, i went to a village nearby from documentation from the 80s and there they were like no no it is gone and you go to the other village there were 12 people in this village they have died oh. i went to the other village the sasan no ja i went to the sasan it's not there they were like no our grandfather used to listen to it since there there is no one they told go to the other village perhaps you will get a notebook then i went to the other village <laughs> they were like there's a krishna leela guru who can tell you more and he was like no there's a guru in that village so that's how much you have to scour for these things and there literally 400 songs in each form just multiply that into some 30 so you have some thousands of songs and ragas of odisha uniquely things of odia that you won't find anywhere else so wonderful I, showed, i think this is quite remarkable may i just quickly bring you in uh, sniti because when he talks about ragas we have to ask you you obviously grew up in this atmosphere uh, so talk a little about your growing up and then you gravitated towards uh, hindustani classical music how did that happen uh, well first of all thank you so much for inviting me to this panel it's, uh, it's and i want to congratulate you on a marvelous saraswati vandana we really thank enjoyed it thank you so it. much it's it yeah. was absolute an honor for me to present it here and thank you so much and the entire team i would like to congratulate such a wonderful event today um as you mentioned ma'am that uh, yes uh, i have um, i don't belong to any musical family but i have grown up listening to ustad bade gulam ali khan saab and uh, pandit bhim sen joshi ji and then also uh, our um, old classics uh, lata mangeshkar ji and mamat rafi saab whatever song they used to sing and whatever melody they have given to the um, music industry i got to know that their base is uh, hindustani classical hmm. and because of their base and the kind the level of singing they do till now we are listening to that melody those are known as evergreen classics and the thumris we are presenting right now in the indian classical uh, khayal gayan or bilambit uh, or whatever we are singing whatever form we are singing ustad bade gulam ali khan saab and then pandit jashraj ji we are still singing um, so they have been they are always been great great inspiration for me and because i have been extremely ins uh, inspired by their singing and also fortunately my guru dr raghunath sahu sir who um, is a disciple of uh, dr damodar hota we all know that is such a uh, eminent personality in hindustani legendary classical artist of odisha and uh, because he uh, came to my life and i was uh, just 12 and in such a tender age i felt that this is a music i should learn and i want to inculcate in me so that that's how i started and uh, uh, this is how i have started my understanding towards indian classical music arushi time. you have been surrounded by music and dance i think since you were a baby you know your aunt your father your grandfather i think all of them have been practitioners what was it like growing up and how have you uh, taken your heritage forward um like you said uh, i was born in a family of artists and it was very natural for me to sort of take to it and uh, it was never a compulsion for me to you know that you were born in this, this family and you must practice this that was never the case but, but uh, uh, no pressure but <laughs> there was a lot of pressure the pressure didn't feel like pressure right. <laughs> let me put it like that because uh, i loved it that much it was just uh, something that i really enjoyed even as a toddler i would just run into my aunt's class and uh, try to copy her <laughs> gestures and all that so it's something that uh, i loved and it was very natural for me to just go into that uh, space but what i'd actually like to uh, because i was just seeing here what is very interesting is that we are here today in bhuvneshwar at uh, odisha literary festival and here i am from delhi 
practicing an art form that comes from Odisha, yes. which I think talks volumes about the art form. It talks volumes about the culture of Odisha, which is not limited to the state, but has now crossed boundaries, not just of states, but of, of nations. And today, Odisha, uh, Odissi music, Odissi dance, it's practiced across the world. So I think that is extremely heartening to see. And that I think, and also, uh, and I find it very interesting that uh, here is uh, Pratik who's uh, practicing, uh, you know, he's going to villages collecting music, which is getting lost. And here is uh, Sniti from the same uh, state, who's also, who's going, who's of course doing this music and has uh, tilted towards Hindustani. So it's, I think culture has no boundaries. And this is the point that I can see at all, like all around me right now, which is really heartening. Like yeah, think. and I think it's uh, up to people like you to take it forward. So uh, I wanted to focus on that, uh, Arushi, with you. And then I'll ask that question of the others as well. What is it that we need to do uh, to keep this contemporary, to keep it modern? Or is it that uh, we just need to stick to what we're doing? So, you know, uh, see, I've, I feel that uh, all these art forms, it's, it's not that there is a category of people who are preserving it and there yeah. is a category of people who are taking it forward. Right. It is very overlapping. If I am someone who is doing a very, very traditional uh, Odia song that was created by my guru's guru perhaps 50 years back, I'm also someone who's creating new work, uh, who's uh, going into more abstract concepts. So there is, the preservation is also happening and the taking forward is also happening. And having said that, I also very firmly believe that all these traditional pieces or the tradition, what we call tradition, is in itself very contemporary. Hmm. Because tradition is not something that is stuck in time. It is changing with time, it's ever evolving. So what was Odissi, what Odissi was 50 years back has evolved ever since. It's been changing and each generation is contributing to it, each generation is adding their things and it's evolving with the current times, everything adds to it, the, so, uh, the society, the social factors, economic factors, everything has an impact, polit political factors, everything has impact on culture and culture has impact on all those right. factors. So everything is interrelated and there is bound to be change but that is what keeps it going. And that's why this whole, uh, the idea, the subject of today's discussion, saving cultural practices and stories of the future, I feel they're interrelated. Both are happening simultaneously right. through our traditions. And the traditions have stood the test of time and I firmly believe that they will continue to. Right, wonderful. Pratik, uh, can we hear a little bit about, uh, uh, can we hear some of the things that got you excited that sent a, thrill down your spine, something that you heard for the first time and you thought, oh my God, <laughs> you know, what have I been missing? Okay, so, I found quite a lot of songs that way. I'll just take, walk you through some. Yeah. There was a Krishna Leela, Krishna Leela, written by Harihara from a village of Ganjam, Gautami. So, uh, that was known to be one of the toughest Leelas to master and uh, just as a side note, these are all based in ODC music, of course, because that's the language, that's the music of this area. And uh, I went to a village in Raigoda, where current Kirtana practitioners told that uh, our father was put to sleep by our grandfather singing this song. <laughs> because in that song, uh, Yashoda is telling to Krishna, Soipada, which is another song we'll be taking you through. So, mm. Ochi one korati re Shyama sundar This song hasn't been sung by, sung in the public arena for some 50, 70 years. That's such a sad thing to note. There's a Radha Premalila in our villages on which Kerusar based, uh, Kerusar's guru actually, Mohan Gosai was very acquainted with Radha Premalila of Ganjam. Which is, uh, look at the planning of the theater. A kid comes in the guise of Krishna, there's Radha's kunja, and Krishna is just appealing, please forgive me. So he comes in the guise of a bird seller, then he comes to put Alta on her feet, and he comes in various characters. Now, Kedusa's guru cleverly notes, Mohan Gosain, Mohan Sundar Dev Goswami, cleverly notes that 
and he makes an adaptation of that. That passes it on to Kedu sir as the, what is the Manabhanjan, which is the famous. Now you have the great grandfather of that form dying. Oh. Whereas the grand, grandson or granddaughter, whatever you call it, is surviving very much in the Odissi arena. So there are songs like uh, Krishna goes to Radha as the bangle seller, Kacharave, sir. He is telling you take a black bangle because you are, you are golden in color and your beloved one is black. Therefore, rakha rakha rasikare ghana kuntala to karaku kala kacha manimapura. Now Radha is annoyed. So Radha is saying, no, no, I don't want black. What is the opposite of black? Golden. So I want a golden bangle because I'm that annoyed with you. Dekhao dekhi bhi vasanta kacha kahi kahi. Look at the language, this Sukhma Rasa Buddha, which we are sorely lacking in today's generation. Manohara sa jadago manohara sa jadago ekala kacha jada aue mote loda Dekhao, dekhi bhi mu Basanta kacha kacha ra Basanta kacha kahi kahi Dekhao, dekhi bhi mu This raga, Panchama Bharadi, is a very unique treasure of Odisha. All of us know. Are Babu Siamo Gono to go le modu. No, this is in that. We have so many gems lying around. Unfortunately, temples stay even if you don't excavate them. And these things die yeah. if you don't get them. That but is I'm the glad we have people like you to <laughs> continue that. Arushi, would you like to tell us uh, something or show us uh, something that uh, would demonstrate what he's telling us? Yeah. So uh, he was talking about a song um, where a mother is putting a child to sleep, something like that. I so found it interesting that it was a father putting his father, son to father. sleep, right? But uh, that was quite no, interesting. I was putting this song that I first sang. Ah. The song was sung sometime in the 1920s right. by a man by putting a man. his son to sleep. That's right. Which and is now the grandson is telling, my father used to sing this song, telling that, can you please find it for me? <laughs> that I had to scour around and finally found that song. Oh, nice. Wonderful. <laughs> so uh, there's this song where Yashoda is putting uh, Krishna to sleep. Uh, Roger Kuchora. I thought we'll just do uh, one line from please that. Please do. Because I, uh, there's just one thing I want to say here that... Uh, you know, you talked about how to keep it uh, more relevant. Contemporary. The, uh, contemporary relevant, yeah. relevant. So, uh, what I feel is that the stories uh, that we express through our dance forms, uh, often people get stuck on the characters saying hmm. that, oh, these are mythological characters from Indian culture or from this state or, you know, they were ancient characters. How can we relate to them? So, I would think that, I, what I would say is that one has to look beyond the characters because what we are essentially trying to portray are emotions that are human emotions That's and right. human emotions that are universal, which again cross all boundaries. So a mother putting a child to sleep is not limited to Odisha or to India, yeah. but across the world, which is why these uh, art forms are also very well appreciated abroad. So we're just going to do one line from uh, Please do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'll just sit and do the Yeah. So I'll speak the lines out yeah. so you can relate. Gopal Krishna Patnaik from Parala Khemundi writes some 200 years ago, Braja ku choro asi chi gheni nebo suwa tuni hui re. So Yashoda is telling her son, a thief has come to Braja, therefore you sleep quietly or he'll snatch you and take you away. <laughs> Which is an emotion that is so commonly heard. Braja ku choro asi chi gheni nebo Suwa tu ni hoi re Braja ku chora Asi chi gheni neva 
Wonderful. I think we can all understand that. I'm going to be a little bit greedy and ask you to do something else. Okay, so we go back to Kavi Surya. So Kavi Surya writes in his Champu, which is a classic. In the Kha song, Lalita Kho Chanti Radhaan Kujhe, Mu Krishna Ngu Dekhya Gu Mana Karthi Li, Tumho Katha Shun Lo Ni, Kahin Ki Baha Pato Kadam Bambu Lo Gu Dekhi Lo, Khara Pato Helo Re, Khelo Lo Lo Khanja Na Ki. Chanchal Lo Khanja Na Pakhi Ro Aakhi Ta Bahu Tu Chanchal Lo Ta Khanja Na Pakhi Vahe Ya Jor Aakhi, Kahin Ki Toh Aakhi Aad Saad Jai Ki Khelo Chumho Tate Mana Karthi Li. So you have become bad, or Khara Pato Helo Re. <laughs> you're, you're over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, We want Sniti to sing us uh, an Uriya song. And please, if you know the words, please join in because you'll very rarely get an opportunity like this. Sniti, over to you. Uh, Uriya song uh, is, uh, I'm, I'm totally enthralled by this uh, beautiful performance by Arashi. Uh, I would like to sing uh, one Uriya classical song that we all know it's a very popular, uh, very popular Odia classical uh, song, composed and uh, performed by none other than Vidushi Sunanda Patnaik ji. So I, I know you all know this, but uh, I, I would try to make you sing. If you, if you know the lyrics, then please join with me. Um, based on Rag Bhairavi, जीवन पात्रमो भरी छाके ते मोते ना दे
I really wish we could continue with this session, but uh, you know we have other sessions to go to. But all I can say is that I think Urissa culture is in very, very safe hands. The future is right here. We have three brilliant practitioners of it. Thank you so much for joining us, and all the very best. Thank you.